So today we are going to get the amperage and wattage draw on my refrigerator to determine what kind of generator or inverter I would need to power my refrigerator in the event of a power loss. Uh, so what I have here today is it's just a standard surge strip and what I've done is I peeled back the um, and exposed the wires to the hot which is black, the neutral and the ground. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my clamp uh, meter 336 but you can use uh, any available amp meter that'll uh, be the clamp on style for this test. And you need a function called inrush. Um, the reason we need this is because with a refrigerator, it contains a compressor. Uh, and when that compressor first starts up, it uses a higher amount of watts and amperage than it does when it runs. And we need to know that because that'll help us size our generator or inverter properly. Um, for this test, I have a Samlex 300 watt pure sine wave uh, inverter, and that will surge to 500 watts. So I also have a Samlex 600 watt pure sine wave inverter that will surge to 1200 watts. And I'm pretty sure the 600 watt inverter would work. What I want to test really is my 300 watt inverter. So the test is going to be, I'm just going to clip this on the white or the black, it doesn't really matter. And when I plug my refrigerator in, we're going to set the inrush you can see there I have it set to AC amps and <clears throat> we can set the inrush. So what happens is, is it's going to sit there and wait until I plug it in and turn it on and then it's going to record the number of amps and that will tell us how many surge amps or you hear that term surge watts that this particular refrigerator uh, will use. And I am also going to use a kilowatt meter, which we'll plug into here, and that'll also help us determine how many running watts the refrigerator needs. So that's how much it needs after it starts, after it gets the compressor going, and it is actually cooling the inside of the freezer and refrigerator. Okay, so I'm down in my basement and what I have here is a Kenmore and it's a side-by-side. -side, so kind of give you a little bit of flavor for what this is. So um, I actually do have stuff in the freezer right now. And I actually do have stuff in the refrigerator and I'm gonna just try to get up here to For some reason the lights not working in the fridge but um, oh it's not working because it's unplugged you dummy but anyway there's the specs but you can see I have the freezer set refrigerator set okay down here you can see I'm running 122 volts um, and over here my inrush is set got it you know wired as I said <laughs> it's going right into an outlet right there and what I'm gonna do is plug it in and I'm gonna try to keep the camera focused on this as we plug it in so got my right hand and I'm about to plug it in and okay so I just plugged it in and you saw it spike up there 6.8 now what we're gonna do just to show you is we're gonna come over to the kilowatt meter and we're gonna look at the watts and you can see that it's drawing 190 watts there and if I go to amps uh, it's gonna show I'm running 2.3 now if I come out of the inrush 
and look at the regular amps, notice that it's almost the same. So this now this amp meter is working in regular amp mode, so it's recording the amps that are flowing through right now, and it's 2.2 amps, 2.3 cycling between them both, which is almost the same that the kilowatts recording, 2.29, and like I said, you saw that one jump between 2.2 and 2.3. So what we'd have to do to determine some variables here is we can look at the voltage. So we're 122.3. Uh, we can look at the amperage, 2.24. Um, we can look at the wattage, and then we can look at the hertz. So hertz, really, if you're in America, should always be 60. Sometimes when you're on a generator, it, it might fluctuate up and down, uh, but America, United States is 60.0. It very rarely moves between 59.9 and 60. So, so what does all these numbers tell us? So what that tells me is we have, while it's running, and that may go up or go down a little bit, but it's using 182 watts when it's running. So putting aside the inrush current for a second, if I had a, technically if I had a inverter that used 100, and, um, let's just say 200 watts, it would run this appliance. But what we have to account for is when I first started it up, you saw that it was 6.8, I believe, when I first plugged it in. So we would have to figure out how many watts that is, right? So we would take, um, our amps 6.8 and times that by 122 volts and that would tell us how many watts we needed on startup and therefore my smaller inverter that I mentioned earlier that's a 300 watt inverter with a 500 watt surge most likely that would not be able to start this um, it would be very close and I'm actually going to test it. Now what it may do is cause um, an overload on the inverter and it may actually start it. I really don't know, but we're gonna, that's the whole purpose of what this uh, test is. So just for comparison's sake, I'm going to be testing a Whirlpool. This is my refrigerator upstairs and I'm not sure if we can get that in there or be able to read it. Anyway, that's the data tab. And this is kind of interesting. 396 watts in defrost mode. So, once it gets out of this mode, it's then going to want to turn the refrigerator back on. And that's when the compressor is going to come on. But you can see it, how it uses 400 watts in defrost mode. So, it's kind of interesting to see and good that this happened because now I know how many watts it uses while it's in defrost mode. So my little 300 um, watt inverter really is not going to be enough to cut it here. Uh, I'm going to need my 600 watt inverter as a bare minimum. Um, I was just curious to see if the 300 watts would work, but now I can clearly see that it would have failed out on the defrost cycle. In, okay, there you go. So you just saw the compressor kick on. It was using 17.4 amps, which is really on the high side. Um, now you can see this one here. It's drawing considerably less than the one downstairs. Um, you know, as it comes on and starts to run, look, it's down to 119, 117, and again. Um, we can shut the inrush off because we don't need it anymore. Just look at the difference. Uh, you know, I'll put the amps on here. 0 0.88, 0 0.9. You know, both these meters are very accurate. Uh, you saw the fluke toss between 0 0.8 and 0.9, and then you see the kilowatt, 0 0.85. I, I'm sorry it's upside down, but uh, I think you can look at it that way and determine that it's 0 0.85 amps. So let's go back to the watts. Look at this refrigerator, 100 watts. It's amazing, huh? Uh, to play it safe, you know, you could buy yourself a 1,000-watt inverter. 
that surged to 2,000 watts, that would uh, definitely power this thing up. You can probably get away with some smaller inverters, and we're going to you know, test one of my 600 watt uh, inverters uh, shortly. That 600 watt will surge to 1,200, which is technically not enough watts to, to run it, but uh, because that surge happens in the first you know, quarter second of when it starts up, some inverters will work and some will not. Uh, my advice is always to oversize. So, you know, my better inverters that I have are 1800 watt inverters and they surge to, I think, 3600 watts, give or take. And that is the inverter that I really would use on here. But for this test, I was curious of a few things is what kind of wattage my refrigerators used and what kind of starting uh, surge amps did they uh, produce. But, um, for all intents and purposes, uh, uh, really to, to do this right, uh, you would, in my opinion, uh, need a minimum of a thousand watt inverter with a surge of 2000. And I would also buy a pure sine wave. And uh, you know, you'll hear pros and cons, guys that use modified sine waves and have no problems. But I, I don't wanna get into the technical details of why I would use a pure sine wave, other than the fact that I would tell you is if you look at the sine wave, uh, and I could show you that, uh, that and maybe in fact I will show you that when I hook the inverter up, that the pure sine wave inverters have basically the same sine wave as your household electric. And why that matters is with motors, you know, and, and these refrigerators have compressor motors in them. And it does less harm on the windings when you have a pure sine wave as to if you have a modified sine wave. Basically a modified sine wave, everything runs a little hotter and I do not want to risk blowing up um, you know, a thousand dollar refrigerator over you know, what amounts to maybe a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars of buying a better sine wave inverter. So buy a pure sine wave instead of a modified. Um, and again, like I said, there's pros and cons. The modifieds are obviously a lot cheaper, but uh, if you want to keep your equipment safe, buy pure sine wave. Okay guys, we're picking up here on the inverter test. Uh, so what I've done here is I went ahead and got my Samlex uh, 600 watt pure sine wave inverter hooked up. And um, I thought I would try the 600 watt first because if it fails, then there's no use even trying the 300 watt. So uh, what I was gonna do here is just to show you with a voltmeter uh, what the battery voltage is right now. So I got it hooked up to the two terminals and you can see we're pulling in right around 12.9, 12.8. Uh, so it's a fairly charged battery. All I wanted to show you here was that I do have the refrigerator cord plugged in to the extension cord. Power is obviously out because I have it unplugged. But that, so really that big long cord, it's a 100 foot 12 gauge cord. What we're going to do is we're going to power it up and plug in and see if it can run. Our inverter on. And we're going to plug it in and see what happens. So now remember, this is 600 watt, 12, uh, 600 watt with a thousand watt surge. So technically, this inverter is actually even pushing it and it may not start. So I'm going to try to. Okay, it's plugged in, and you can see it's using 18.3 amps. So 18.3 DC amps times 12 volts would tell you how many, um, about how many watts this is using, which should be similar to you know, the wattage of uh, what the AC was using, maybe a little higher because of the inefficiency of the inverter itself. And what we'll do is we'll just walk into the house and make sure that it is running. If you can see down there now, the power cord's on. I'll put the, I don't know if you can hear this, but the refrigerator is running. I can hear the compressor on and we've got lights. We're gonna cut out and then we'll cut back in. I'm gonna hook the 300 watt up. I flipped it over to my Semlex 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. Um, going to the battery. Now again, uh, don't know what's gonna happen with this inverter, but let's give it a shot. So, 
I expect this one's gonna scream at us, but we'll see. So let's power it on. Okay. And let's go ahead and plug it in and see what the heck happens. Let's see if I can do this well. Okay. Um, I'm impressed. Oh, there it goes. I'm just gonna power it off because that's not happy. So, what we can see is that initially it seemed like it was gonna start it. However, there was, uh, quickly went into um, alarm mode and I don't think this particular inverter was able to get past the starting and surge watts of that refrigerator. 